So, Merlin, a movie like Rampage and a character like this must have been a new experience for you. What did you think of the script when you read it? I loved it. You know, it's so funny because you think of a video game and you go, how do you make a film? Out of, what's the story going to be? Um, but they did a great job on this film because it, it, the script got me. I mean, it was a bit of a tearjerker with the relationship between Dwayne Johnson and the gorilla. Um, it made you care about the characters. It made you care about the film. It got you invested. Um, and then you get to see a big epic film that just has a lot of crazy monsters and explosions and buildings crashing as a, as a nice little added. And part of it is your character's fault. Sorry to say that, but it's true. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you, because you do play the main villain. Um, how would you describe Claire? Claire is a cold, nasty, powerful woman who is devoid of any empathy um, and is all about getting herself ahead in the world. And what does this Project Rampage mean to her? Everything. This is her golden child. This Project Rampage is her key into changing the way that military uses weapons. This is weaponized DNA. I mean, this is the, the next level. Um, she, all she sees is dollar signs. <laughs> and it is somewhat based on, on real science. Did you kind of delve into that a bit to understand it better? We had, so we had someone from CRISPR um, uh, who was on set. And, you know, CRISPR is all about the, you know, DNA and modifying DNA, and, which is actually a beautiful thing if it's in the hands of the right people. Um, it can actually help in what they're trying to do is cure certain autoimmune diseases and, and whatnot, um, which is way beyond my capacity of understanding how you even begin to do that kind of research because I am not, I don't have a scientific mind whatsoever. Um, but it was really fascinating to hear some of the, the projects that they work on and, and, you know, there's so much nowadays in modern science and with, with DNA and stem cell research and cloning and, you know, we have, we have it all. Uh, it's, it's, it's here. It's just not to this capacity and hopefully never will be. And your character kind of represents what happens when it falls into the wrong hands, right? That's right. <laughs> we don't want Claire Wyden or anyone like her out there in the world getting her hands on this. But she's not alone. She has her brother next to you. And that's an interesting relationship, right? Mm -hmm. It is an interesting relationship. I asked Brad why she doesn't just kill him. <laughs> because he feels like he's quite useless. But I think she enjoys his company. I think she enjoys having a little pet, somebody, a little puppet to control. He's a bit of entertainment. She finds him kind of cute as like in, you know, sort of like a little brotherly way. But And I think she, he really is the only one that she has any real human contact with. Um, so I think she just kind of keeps him around for shits and giggles. Speaking of shits and giggles, yeah. you have some great moments with Jake in, the, in, those, in those scenes. Yes, he is. Jake Lacey is one of the funniest guys I've ever met. He, he had me in tears, laughing so hard. I mean, and it would be right before Brad would call action, which was super unfair. <laughs> um, but it's needless to say, we had a really great time. Um, and then, you know, he brought a lot of his comedy into the scenes that we did together, which again presented itself to be a really big challenge because after a certain time when you spend time with someone and they're really funny, all you have to do is look at their face and they're not even doing anything and you want to start laughing. Um, but yeah, he's, he was brilliant and he made some really funny choices as that character. You've never really played a villain before and many actors say that it's more fun. Do you agree? It is more fun. I think because, I think because it's more of a departure from who you actually are. I mean, I'm not devoid of empathy at all. I'm the opposite. Um, I, I, I cry a little too often at things and for people that I don't even know. So it's, it's, it's fun to just step away from that and see what it would be like. And there's some, there's sort of a freeing feeling to it, to not have to care for a minute, to completely step out of almost a, a, a humane sense of thinking. Um, it was exciting and thrilling, and, and it, it kind of speaks to that part of us that goes, oh, I like, I like a bad boy or a bad girl. There's that little thing where you're like, well, what is that? Why do we like that so much? And I think there is that feeling of just, simple freedom you know there's no you don't have to be 
diplomatic about anything. You don't have to sugarcoat anything. You just say it like it is. Because a good guy, of course, is Dwayne Johnson. Yes. And, <laughs> and no one better than him in a role like this. What can you say about him? He's so perfectly suited for this kind of stuff. I mean, he is, it, he's really interesting as uh, uh, an actor because, first of all, he's a lovely human being. He's one of those guys, he's like a big teddy bear. You know, he walks and he smiles and you just crumble. He just melts you with his smile. He's super charming and charismatic. As an actor, he is so aware of his audience <clears throat> and what they want and what they need, um, which isn't so in most cases with actors, they're, it's usually quite introverted. It's usually mu much more about the character and what the character, and not that he doesn't have that as well, but there's this added layer of going, no, no, I don't think the fans will want this or will want this. So he knows his audience so well, which is why I think it works, which is why he is where he is in this, in, in the world of Hollywood. And you're also working with another formidable actor who is, of course, um, Naomi Harris, who yes. plays Dr. Kate Cowell, a character that your character also has a history with, and mm -hmm. that's, that's another interesting relationship in the movie. Yeah, it is. I, you know, the one thing about these big films is that I, I wish that we all had more time together <laughs> on set to do more scenes, you know, um, because she's so lovely. She's such a, a humble, and gentle soul, Naomi Harris, um, and a powerhouse when she acts. You know, she just is, she brings it. She's so prepared, she's incredible. Um, and yeah, Claire Wyden and Kate Caldwell, she was her employee for a while um, and actually came up with this DNA structure. Um, but again, it was that, for her intention was to be able to cure her brother from cancer and Claire White and took it and ran with it. <laughs> a big movie with well fleshed out characters, with a heart to the story. What do you think Brad Payton brought to it all as a filmmaker? Oh, Brad is the glue. Uh, he's the, he's so excitable. He's so um, passionate. Uh, he is so ready to take on a massive challenge. Um, there's nothing about, he's so full of energy and he just loves what he does and he's good at it. Um, I think when you are passionate about something, um, you know, you, you just dive in head first and that's what Brad does and he's, I loved working with him. It, also because he's clear on what he wants and that's easy then to trust fall into that because he knows he has a clear vision, he explains it so well and so you know what you're doing, you know what you're going for.